Hello and welcome back. Now we'll talk about the Chapter 8 of the DBDB Act and how we can map it to any organizational needs. Let's start with the introduction. Chapter 8 of the DPDP Act 2023 is pivotal in establishing a structured approach to penalties and adjudication for non-compliance. As discussed in a previous discussion, the importance of establishing and understanding the regulatory framework continues here, where we delve into the consequences of breaches and mechanisms for adjudication disputes. This chapter ensures the organizations are held accountable for providing a clear pathway for addressing, reinforcing the culture of compliance. Coming to section 33, subsection 1 and 2, imposing monetary penalties. So here we have to have a compliance monitoring system where we need to implement a robust system to detect and prevent breaches, ensuring ongoing compliance. For example, now IBM employs advanced monitoring systems to track data handling practices and detect anomalies reducing the likelihood of the breaches. Now we have to implement this in an organization for identifying and mitigating risk, thus minimizing potential breaches. Second, have an incident response plan. Here we need to develop a response plan to address breaches promptly, minimizing the penalties. For example, the Equifax data breach. They implemented an incident response plan that includes immediate notification, corrective measures and public communication, which helped re reduce the fallout. Now, the organization needs to have a well-prepared incident response plan that mitigates risk and demonstrate the organization's commitment to compliance. Third, training and awareness. We have to regularly conduct training programs to educate employees on data protection obligations and non-compliance consequences. For example, now Google provides ongoing privacy and security training for its employees to ensure that they are aware of the responsibilities under the data protection laws. Now, companies need to foster these culture of compliance, reducing the likelihood of breaches and associated penalties. Fourth, documentation. We need to have maintained detailed records of compliance efforts, breach incidents and mitigation actions. For example, Facebook, which is also known as Meta, maintains comprehensive records of its data handling practices, including compliance audits, which have been very crucial during regulatory reviews. Now, keeping a detailed records helps the organization shows that it follows the DPDP Act 2023 during checks, which can lower penalties. Coming to section 34, that is the crediting of penalty sums. Action steps would be first, financial processes. We need to establish clear financial processes to manage and remit penalty payments to the Consolidated Fund of India efficiently. For example, Infoices uses automated systems to manage financial tasks making sure that they follow the rules and pay penalties on time. Now, organizations must have this for a streamlined financial process to enhance accountability and ensure compliance with the DBDP Act. Second, audit trail. We need to have a maintained comprehensive audit trail for all the financial transactions related to any penalty payments. For example, Wipro. Now, Wipro maintains detailed audit logs of all the transactions, ensuring that the financial records are transparent and auditable. Now, we need to have this in an organization to have a robust audit trail that supports transparency and helps in managing any inquiries or audits. Third, reporting. We need to implement a robust reporting mechanisms to track penalty payments effectively and facilitating audits. Now, TCS has implemented an integrated reporting system that ensures accurate tracking of all the financial transactions, including penalty payments, aiding internal and external audits. Now we need to have this in an organization to help ensure tracking of payments efficiently. Coming to section 35 to 37, that is the adjudication process. Action steps would be, first, have legal support. We need to ensure the availability of legal assistance to navigate the adjudication process. For example, Infoices. Now Infoices has a dedicated team that helps in specializing in data protection laws to assist in any adjudication processes ensuring the organization's interests are protected. Now, we need to have this in an organization where we hire people who are well-versed with all the data protection laws. Second, have internal policies. We need to develop internal policies to efficiently handle adjudication, ensuring timely response. For example, HCL Technologies has implemented internal workflow to manage adjudication proceedings, ensuring organized and timely responses. 
Now, we need to have this in an organization to have efficient internal processes that reduce delays and enhance the organization's ability to comply with the adjudication requirements. Third, training. We need to conduct training session on the adjudication process, ensuring relevant staff are well versed. For example, Accenture conducts regular training for its legal and compliance teams on navigating adjudication process under various regulatory frameworks. Now, training ensures that the organization is prepared to handle adjudication efficiently, minimizing potential disruptions. Fourth, documentation. Now, we need to have detailed records of adjudication proceedings and its outcomes. For example, IBM meticulously documents all the legal proceedings, including adjudication, to support future cases and compliance efforts. Now, we need to have this detailed documentation, which will help in future cases and ensure the organization can demonstrate compliance during adjudication. Coming to section 38, that is the compliance and accountability. Action steps would be, first, have compliance programs. We have to develop and implement comprehensive compliance programs aligning with the DBDPR. For example, SAP has developed a global compliance program to ensure all operations meet regulatory frameworks and requirements, including data protection. Now, compliance programs ensures all organization practices align with the DBDP Act. Second, monitoring mechanisms. We have to establish mechanisms to monitor ongoing compliance with the Act. Now, for example, Microsoft, Google, etc. uses automated monitoring system to continuously assess compliance with data protection laws, enabling proactive issue resolution. Now, continuous monitoring allows the organization to address compliance issues before they escalate ensuring that they are adhering to the DBDP Act. Third, documentation. We need to have maintained transparent and detailed records of all the compliance efforts. For example, Oracle. So Oracle maintains comprehensive records of all the compliance activities, including audits and corrective actions to demonstrate adherence to regulatory requirements. Now, having a transparent documentation demonstrate that the organization's commitment to compliance and supports regulatory requirements. Fourth, engagement and training. We have to engage employees at all levels and provide ongoing training on compliance requirements. For example, Adobe provides continuous training for its employees on data protection and compliance, fostering a culture for accountability. Now, ongoing training and compliance ensures that all the employees are aware of their roles in maintaining compliance, promoting a culture for accountability and data protection. In conclusion, implementing these mechanisms effectively will strengthen organizational governance and enhance compliance with the DBDP Act 2023, ensuring that the organization is prepared for all the data protection complexities. Thank you for watching.